know it's been a long time. This time I'm going to talk to you about this book, The Wicked and the Divine by Kieran Gillen. And it's primarily a story about what the world would be like if pop stars were actual gods. This is a huge commentary on pop culture and what our life is actually like. A lot of people tend to treat pop stars like gods. I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time talking about the plot of the book. I am going to go into some of the stuff that goes through volume one, volume two, and the rest of the single issues that have been released so far to issue 17, which is the end of arc three. And so if you haven't read them all and you're, you want to, please don't continue watching. I will spoil things. If you don't care about the destination and are more interested in the journey, bless your soul, then please feel free to continue watching and yeah, I'll spoil things, but it'll still be fun to look at the pictures and read the story on your own. So the major mystery of the Wicked and the Divine is centered around this pantheon of gods. Every 90 years a new set of 12 gods are awakened in our time period and the human race gets to spend some time with them and then they go away. They're supposed to be the muse for our generation. They're meant to inspire people to greatness something. It's not really clear what the gods' role is. They're just kind of there. There's even a scene in volume one where Lucifer basically looks like a female Billy Idol, and I'm okay with that. Lucifer basically says that the gods have no real purpose, but this pantheon of gods is around in our day and age. Uh, the story starts in January of 2014. These gods, when they're awakened, are told that they will live for two years and then they will be dead. There's a lot of mortality involved with these immortals. Soon after the beginning of Volume 1, our female version of Lucifer, she's convicted of murdering a few people and put in jail. So the big mystery is who put her there because she claimed she was framed. Eventually you find out that this woman named Anangi, she is a Greek god of necessity, she is the one who framed Lucifer, she put her in jail, and it seems like her ultimate goal is to kill all of the gods. I don't know if that's something that she's been doing for several centuries. She was also around for previous versions of the Pantheon. The last one was in the 1920s, and in the very beginning of the series you see her leaving just before the remaining gods in that century kill themselves, presumably. Maybe she did that too. It seems like Anangi may be killing other gods in an effort to prolong her own life. There's something called the Prometheus Gambit, wherein a mortal or an immortal kills a god and takes their life. Anangi says that only the gods themselves can do this. If a mortal person were to kill a god, they wouldn't become a god or gain immortality of any kind. But who knows? She could be lying. Throughout Volume 1 and Volume 2, we're also introduced to a fangirl named Laura. She really, really wants to be a god, despite the fact that she knows they live kind of tragic, brutal, and short lives. That's still what she wants for herself. Ultimately, she does get to become a god for one hot second before Anangi also kills her. To the end of the latest issue, it's revealed that she is still alive and is prepping herself for her first performance. Really, that's the only reason I'm interested in continuing the series. I want to see what happens to Persephone moving forward, and I really want to know if there's anything more to Anangi killing other gods than her just attempting to prolong her own life. I think there's something else going on, and she feels that killing the gods that exist now will somehow prevent tragedy from striking other gods in the future, or even herself. Some of the other major things that are cool about it are things like the inclusion of the Japanese sun god Amatoras and Unexpected. If I were to cosplay anyone from the series, it would probably be her. She uses her powers to transport herself to Japan so she can pray at her family's shrine every day. It seems as though all of the characters are native to the UK, that they were all just there and by coincidence happened to all live near each other before they were turned into gods. Which is another reason why I feel like what Anangi is doing is attempting to awaken all the gods probably before they're supposed to awaken and kill them off. Even though the recurrence is only supposed to include 12 gods, she was somehow able to awaken a 13th. For her to have that ability, be able to awaken people, kill them for almost no reason, not notify the pantheon that a 13th god was awakened, 
It all seems far too coincidental. It's a really interesting series for anyone who's heavily involved in fandom. One of my favorite quotes from Volume 2. It is a poor critic who says that a lack of effect on them implies all others are insincere in their love. I can be a 25-year-old and still love Harry Potter, and that's fine. You don't have to agree with me, but it doesn't mean that you're right for telling me I'm wrong. It's a really succinct way of summing up kind of my personal philosophy on fandom. But overall, I found the series lackluster. The art is beautiful. Everyone says that. I don't want to harp on it for too long because I feel like it's a lame criticism of a comic book. <laughs> there are more things that you can talk about besides just the art. <laughs> I was surprised because a lot of people have given The Wicked and the Divine really high praise. A lot of people love it. They say it's better than Saga, it's their favorite comic book, they've put aside everything else so they can just read this, and I, I didn't feel that way. I'll continue it, but it's definitely not gonna replace things like Saga and Lumberjanes and Paper Girls in my mind. Well, I'm interested to hear what you have to say, if any of you have actually read the book. If you agree or disagree with um, Anangi's motivations at this point, I would love to hear more about that. So if you read it and you really really loved it, feel free to tell me that I'm full of crap and don't know what I'm talking about. If you read it and you really really hated it, feel free to let me know. That ruled and you're awesome. Thanks. Bye.